Power Wallet has completely taken over my life, so much so that we've been streaming over on twitch.tv slash elconcore every single night till about 2 o'clock in the morning. Now, if you want to come over, drop a follow, come say hi when we're live, and if you have an Amazon Prime account, you can connect it to your Twitch account, you get a free sub, don't waste it. But with all this time I've been playing, I have a little bit of knowledge I'd like to impart, so let's get into a few beginner tips, and then we're going to work our way to the mid and late game tips. Which brings us into transporting items. Now, when you open up some sort of chest, you see here you want to move, let's say, the coal, the nails, all this stuff over. Instead of right-clicking them over, in the bottom right of the screen, you're going to see the button you need to click to transport all of them on. The quick stack, right? On mouse and keyboard, it's going to be R. On controller, it's going to be whatever that button says. So you just click that, instantly puts it over. You don't have to click every single individual thing. Now our second tip is actually going to be is to get one of these little pals right here is a Vixie. You get a Vixie pretty early on in the main areas. So right around in these areas you're going to find Vixies. And as soon as you can you need to unlock the you need to unlock the ranch. And if you put a couple of Vixies in here you see that little pal sphere right here. That's what the Vixie brought up for you. She can dig pal spheres, arrows, just so that you don't have to spend resources on getting them. You can just passively just be collecting pal spheres. Now, as you can see, I have 2,600. I have not crafted any of these. And as soon as you get a pal condenser, you can actually put a lot of Vixies together. And when you upgrade them high enough, you will actually she'll actually start digging up some mega spheres. So, so let's go to tip number three. Since we did talk a little bit about the pal condenser, but to unlock some of these items here in this purple you need ancient technology points now how you actually get these technology points is is by either completing the towers which will give you a couple or you f defeat these bosses which are going to give you one now the only ones that are going to count for giving you ancient technology points are going to be the overland bosses so things like the pen king where you have to enter a little dungeon area to fight an arena to fight them you won't get any ancient technology points. But if you go to, say, want something like Chillit or King Pekka, where they just spawn in the overworld, that's when you will actually get an ancient technology point. Which brings us to tip number four, which is going to be actually as early as you can defeat or catch Chillit. As quickly as you can, get yourself an ancient technology point. Get you some of those ancient civilization parts, which is how you can infinitely farm these you can farm these every single hour to get them but defeat chill it as soon as you can so that you can get yourself your first technology point which you what you need to do is get the egg incubator this is the first one you should unlock this is the first thing you need to build as soon as you can only needs two ancient sieve parts which you should be able to get from defeating chill it for the first time having this egg incubator is just going to be so nice finding eggs out there in the wild will just start giving you all sorts of pals that you don't already have since we we're talking about the alpha pals let's get into tip number five going to be getting infinite pal fluids now pal fluids are going to be essential for building building your later plantations it's going to be useful for hot springs you're going to need it for cement later on so what you want to do is go over here to the pen king fight so you want to enter the Pen King fight, and then you want to you want to defeat all the little penguins. Do not fight the Pen King himself. Just just the little guys. Collect all the power fluids, and then we want to make our way out. And if we go back in, since we haven't defeated the Pen King. He will respawn, and whenever he respawns, he always spawns three little penguins, right? So this is a way to get infinite PAL fluids. Even even into the late game, this is going to be probably one of your easier ways. You could catch them, take them to your base, and then butcher them, and you'll get double the results. But that takes a bit of time, putting all the penguins into your party, and then you have to take them out, then you have to butcher them. And it takes a little bit longer than if you were to just spawn in. Oh, I did not pay attention. Well, see, now I will show you. This kind of works out. Ancient Civ parts. I didn't pay attention. My Ragnarok actually killed the Pen King. So what that means 
is you see in the bottom right there or kind of the middle of the screen i have to wait an hour before the pen king spawns again so don't kill the pen king so you can keep doing it see there he's not going to be here nothing will spawn tip number six is actually going to be in a dungeon so we the dungeon itself the actual tip so when you get to the boss room you're going to see there are uh lift monk is going to be the dungeon boss now if you don't want a, a dungeon boss being lift monk because if you don't know if you catch this guy he's a little bit stronger than the regular lift monks so if you're looking for a particular pal just run back out break through this door and then just run right back in and we should have a new pal I did not go far enough so just make sure you go into the room and there we go now we have Kativa don't really want a Kativa, so we will go all the way back out and into this room. Give it a second, then we will go back. And back to a lift monk again. So let's just do this one more time. And now we got the deers, right? So let's talk about tip number seven going to be getting a mining base as soon as possible right something that has a bunch of these iron nodes also has a bunch of these coal nodes would be pretty nice you don't have to but coal is going to be very very essential for making the stronger balls and pretty much everything you're going to need so you need a ton of coal so getting a mining base that has both is going to be really nice for you but if you want only coal you can or only iron you can so let's talk about where we're at right now if you go here to the sacred realm of the guardian and you just go northeast just a little bit you will actually encounter this little it's a little plateau it is a little plateau it is completely unraidable no raids will even actually spawn here because there's no rows and there's no anything to get up here and getting this as operational as quickly as possible is going to be pretty nice because it produces an absolute ton of iron and coal, right? So if we look right here, we have 7,731 in between all of these chests. So what you're want, gonna wanna do, just freshly starting out, build a little area here, put your pal box down so that you make sure that everything is within the blue circle. And then you're gonna wanna put down these chests in between the nodes right that way when they are transporting they do it rather quickly but you want to make sure they're not too close so that they don't block the actual spawns of the nodes themselves you notice there's going to be an absolute ton of them everywhere but that's okay because when you're in your base here it's going to pull from every single chest so you don't need to transport everything all the way a little farm area over here getting lettuce and tomatoes so that we can make some salads because let's just go ahead and queue up some salads real quick always going to need salads here because if we read it gives a slightly improved work speed now this to get tomato plantation and a lettuce plantation it is a little bit farther down so lettuce is 38 and tomato is much sooner is 32 so you can't make this food until much later, but just getting berry plantations down and doing regular berries works perfectly fine. Just cook them so you get that plus one sanity for each berry that they eat is going to help out a lot. So then let's talk about, let's say you don't want to do all your crafting here, which is what I'm going to do. I'm remodeling some things. So we're going to be putting our production stuff up there so that we just build everything at this location. But let's say you don't want to do that. You want to transfer everything from here to your main base, right? Because this is going to be your second base. So we are currently over encumbered, right? You can't really move. When you when you grab all your materials, 
you won't be able to move because it's 62,000 pounds. You can barely move. You can move really slowly, and you could make your way over, but it's going to take a little bit of time. If you're over encumbered like this, what you can actually use is the grappling gun, and you just instantly can move as quickly as you want. You can go into your next base and then make your way over again just grapple it's going to be so much quicker and then you can deposit it Im immediately and for a quick little tip number nine when you use the grappling gun you see it has it goes on a cooldown if you just unequipped it equip it again you can instantly do it so you can just instantly unequip equip and you instantly refresh that cooldown so you don't have to wait that full time now, tip number 10 is going to be about the breeding farms. You want to get one of those as quickly as you can. Level 19 is actually when you can unlock it. And creating one of those is going to be so, so beneficial for getting new pals that you haven't found, for completing your pal deck to begin with to get all that extra XP, and also getting the right passives on your, on your pals, like this Ragnarok that I bred in runner nimble and swift to just give absolutely insane movement speed so what you're going to want to do is make a bunch of cakes now to make a cake you need flour you need red berries you need milk eggs and honey flour you're going to grow some wheat you're going to put it into a mill it's going to be easy to get red berries berry plant berry plantations easy to get but the milk the egg and the honey are things that you can only get from the drops from the pals themselves so one way is you could just slaughter a whole bunch of pals and get those but that's not very efficient. What is so much more efficient is putting a little chickpea in a ranch, putting a mazarina in the, uh, in the ranch, and putting one of those bee guards also in the ranch. While they're in the ranch, they're gonna be slowly dropping these materials. Now, where the tip is, is actually what you wanna do is you want to level these guys up, right? So you can put in this condenser, okay? So if you use this condenser, let's say on a chicken, you see right here, you have these stars. They start off as just zero, but the higher up you go for these farm animals, it's gonna upgrade their egg layer. So they're gonna lay more eggs. For the mazarina, they're gonna lay more egg, or they're gonna drop more milk. And for the bee guards, they're gonna drop more honey. So getting this up to two, to three, to four stars is gonna be they're going to drop so much more individually than if you had a bunch in a farm itself. Also, once when you get it to this last star, their all of their handy or all their jobs actually get increased by one. So this is beneficial for any pal. This little ranch symbol is going to be come two. They're going to be ranch two, and they're going to drop more and more often. So getting as maxed out stars is going to be really beneficial since we're talking about the breeding farms let's get into tip number 11 and that's going to be you can use the breeding farms to unlock the pal deck and get more pals that you normally can't get very easily right so the thing you're going to want to get is a grizzbolt and a relaxosaurus these two pals are going to help you so much in the breeding process because what you want to do is actually go into a breeding calculator site it's going to show you all the breeding pairs make your life a lot easier relaxosaurus and grizzbolts are kind of rare in the breeding sense so it's gonna they they can be used for a lot of breeding combinations to get you new pals so get a grizzbolt get a relaxosaurus as soon as possible and where you're going to get a grizzbolt is going to be this southern island right here plateau of beginning so you just go straight south and you're going to find relaxes or you're going to find grizzbolts right here they aren't and if they aren't spawned you just fly away and then you come back and new pals should be spawned so but yeah if you just leave come back you will actually you have a higher chance of getting grizzbolt right keep doing that until you get a grizzbolt at least get one and then over here is where your relaxosaurus is going to be so again from plateau beginnings so you just keep going over all the way to here if you want to the ravine entrance here just straight west of the desolate church tip number 12 bee guards these suckers are they're fun they're a great time when you try to capture them do some damage to them they have a skill that causes them to explode and when they do so you can't you obviously can't catch them so these can be a little bit more annoying to catch the first one in order to put into your farm to get you some more honey right 
So what you can actually do is run around into their area where they are spawned at, which is this kind of central island here, right? So plateau of beginnings, you just go straight. If you go straight over to here and then you go across, you will actually find bee guards in this location. Now, if you don't want to go and find them because they're a little bit more annoying to deal with, what you can actually do is search these areas. You're going to find these verdant eggs. These verdant eggs are actually very commonly going to be a bee guard. And now for the last tip, tip number 13. Tip number 13 is going to be getting leather, bones, flame organs, ice organs, ammo, anything you really, really, really need you can actually get from these merchants. So what you can do with these merchants is when you're out in the area, you can actually capture them. You you weaken them down, you throw some foul spheres at them, and you're gonna be able to get him. Once when you do that, you employ him into the base and you'll be able to buy things. So bones, leather, horn, high quality power fluids. This one's a big one, so you don't have to go farm them yourselves, right? There's different types of merchants. You got these wandering guys, there's actually a couple that sell different things. So this guy selling uh, these, he's selling the ice organ. There's one that sells the flame and organ and the venom glands. So you can capture him. And also let's look at another guy here will actually sell ammo. So you don't actually have to craft ammo because ammo is a pretty, it's pretty annoying one to try to craft. So this guy will actually just sell ammo. So you can just, you know, so that's going to do it for just a few little tips, kind of help you out, get you a little bit going in the game. If you enjoyed this, please drop a like, subscribe to the channel and let me know what else would you like to know? What would you like to see me do? And also, like I said before, come over to Twitch, come say hi, drop a follow, enjoy the show.